In this video, we're going to talk about protocols, ports, and sockets. So we already introduced what a protocol is earlier in the course. And if you remember, they're nothing more than rules that dictate how we communicate back and forth. So in regards to a computer network, protocols are rules that govern how machines exchange data and are able to communicate with one another effectively. So in other words, computers use protocols to communicate back and forth, specifically networking protocols. And as you'll see in this video and in this section, there are quite a lot of them that we're going to cover. Now, when you look on the operating system themselves, if you want to see what protocols are running, they're typically called a process or a service. And I went ahead and I created a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine for this lecture and I installed DNS. DHCP and the web server on there just to show you how we can identify these processes and servers on a Windows Server 2016. Now in regards to protocols, protocols are always going to have a port number associated with them. And when we're talking about ports, we're not talking about the physical ports like a USB port or an RJ45 port. We're talking about a logical port. So when we're talking about protocols, they have a logical port that is bound to them with a specific number. So when you're looking at processes and service, specifically a specific protocol, you're going to notice that each one has a specific port number assigned to it. In addition to that, we can take it one step further. When we combine an IP address with a port number, we call those a socket and I'm going to demonstrate those as well. So what you see right here is we see the IP address of 192.168.1.1 and we bound it to port 80. That's called a socket and I'm going to demonstrate that to you later in this lecture when we get on to the Windows Server 2016 machine. So that's protocols, ports, and sockets. Let's jump to the next slide where we talk about protocols and sockets and specifically why we need them. So why do we need ports and sockets? Well, the answer is very simple. It's because a computer can have multiple different protocols running at once, and we need a way to differentiate one from another. So for example, right here, we have a server with an IP address of 192.168.1.100, and we've set it up as an FTP server, as well as a web server and a DNS server. So FTP is running on port 21, HTTP for the web server is running on port 80, and the DNS server is running on port 53. So what we have to do to differentiate FTP from HTTP and DNS is we have to assign them that logical construct, that port number. So when we're looking to access an FTP server or an HTTP server or DNS server, we can say, okay, I need to go to this IP address and specifically this port number because I know FTP is running on port 21 or I need to go to port 80 because I know the web server is running on port 80 for HTTP. So that's the whole purpose because if we think about this from the perspective of being a server, it's going to be multitasking with a variety of network based applications. And we have to have a way to differentiate one from another. And that's the whole point of having these port numbers and having these sockets, which I'll demonstrate later in the lecture. So that's the reason why we need a port number and a socket. We can't simply just say, okay, we're going to start up FTP, we're going to start up HTTP, and we're going to start up DNS and not bind them to any port number. Because if we didn't, then the system wouldn't be able to differentiate one from another. And it's as simple as that. So when we're talking about port types and port numbers, there's three different types and they have a certain amount of different port numbers associated with them. So the first ones are the well-known ports, and those are going to be port numbers 0 to 1023. These are assigned to well-known protocols, and you're going to see some of those on the preceding next two slides. After that, there are what we call registered ports that are also assigned to protocols, but they're not assigned to the most well-known or the most used protocols but they can be assigned to any sort of protocol that an organization comes up with. They can request to have it registered and it would be registered within this range of 1,024 up to 49,151. And then lastly, we have what are called dynamic ports, which we'll talk about the purpose of them later in this course, but they're designed for us to be able to use them for our needs 
when we're connecting to a server to request some information or some data from them, we have to assign ourselves what we call a dynamic port. And you're going to notice that these range from 49,152 up to 65,535. So that is the purpose of ports and sockets. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the more popular protocols and their associated port numbers and whether they use TCP or UDP. Now what I've gone ahead and done in this lecture is I put some of the more popular ones in a table view, but I'm not going to go over them one by one in this lecture because we have multiple dedicated lectures further on in our preceding TCP IP sections where we talk about a lot of these protocols in depth. I just wanted to give you an idea of how many there are in regards to the more popular ones so you have an understanding of what we're talking about. So let's take a look at my Windows Server 2016 machine now and take a look at protocols running as processes and services and also do a demonstration of a socket. All right, so now you're looking at my Windows Server 2016 virtual machine that I set up for this video as a means to give you a live demonstration of how we can identify protocols, ports, and services running on a specific operating system. Now I want you to understand before I get started that you don't need to know how to do all the stuff that I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. There are some commands that we're gonna cover later in the course, so don't worry if you don't understand what those are and how they work. We'll talk about them in much detail later in the course. The whole purpose of this video is just to give you the basics of how you can look at this stuff within an operating system. And Windows Server 2016 is pretty straightforward, so I decided to use it. Now, what did I do with this? Well, I went ahead, I installed it, and I also added on a DHCP server, a DNS server, and a web server. So the web server for Windows is IIS. If you don't know what DHCP or DNS does, don't worry, you don't need to know that in this video because we're gonna cover that in much more detail later in the course. But I just wanna show you how we can actually identify them within the operating system. So we can see that they're up and running here within Server Manager, but there's some other ways that we can take a look at them as well. So what I can do is I can go into Task Manager. So I'm gonna right click down here, go into Task Manager. And within the Windows operating system, we can notice and see that there is a tab for processes and services. So let's take a look at this. So what you're gonna notice is that there is a process for IIS running right here. And if I get rid of the highlighter so I can scroll down further, you're gonna notice that there's one for DCP up here as well. And let's see if we can identify one for DNS. So they're not always named in the most straightforward manner, but there's always multiple different ways in which we can find different services. So what you're gonna notice down here is that there is a service for the DHCP server, and there's also one, there's actually a couple running for our web server down here. Now, I can't easily identify one for DNS, so what we can do is we can go over to our services tab, and we can see what we can find over here as well. And if I scroll down, what we're gonna notice is that we can see one for DHCP. We can actually see a couple for DHCP, and we can see a couple for DNS. So what you're gonna notice is that there's actually a service running for the server and the client. The client would be the operating system as a client, meaning that it's using a DNS server and it's using a DHCP server for IP addressing and to identify DNS information, which we'll talk about what DNS and DHCP is later in the course. You're gonna notice that there's a process ID. The process ID is not the actual port number. That's an ID number that the operating system assigns to each service. So this tells us some basic information, but if we're not able to find everything that we wanna find, we can actually go to the command line and find some additional information. So let's go ahead and minimize Task Manager, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up a couple of command lines. What I've done is I've already run a couple of commands. On the left, I've run a net stat with some switches. In regards to net stat, it's gonna tell us the status of specific connections, ones that we're listing for our different services. In other words, our servers such as DHCP, DNS, and our web server, ones that we've actually established with other systems. And it's gonna show us the IP address with the port number. And hopefully you're noticing that this is a socket. 
something that we talked about. Over here, the foreign address is who we're communicating with. And again, these are going to be sockets and the state of whether it's listing or it's established and the associated Windows process ID. Over here on the right, we have another command called net start. And this is essentially just going to tell us all the Windows services that are starting and running. So let's start off by taking a look at our net start command. That's just going to show us the services that are running. And it's the same thing as looking over here within our task manager, looking at the processes and the services, but it's a different view. It's directly from command line. And you're going to notice that there is a little bit of a difference. So the first thing that I want to highlight is that we can see that we have our DCB client and server that we talked about earlier, as well as our DNS client and server. And of course, the ones that we're really concerned with are the servers. So we can see that both of those are running, but one of them that I had a hard time finding earlier was the web server. So if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, what you're going to find is here in the command prompt, it calls it World Wide Web Publishing Services. So rather than calling it IIS, it calls it World Wide Web Publishing Services. So that gives us some basic information. It confirms that it's up and running. So what we can do now is we can take a look at Netstat. So what Netstat does is it shows us the IP address with the actual port and the process ID. So for our web server, that's going to always be running on port 80 unless we change it. So HTTP runs on port 80. And so what you're going to notice with Netstat is that we see it running right here. So it tells us that our server is listening on this port number. And when you see all zeros, that's the server telling us that on any IP address that you assign to me, if you give me multiple different network interface card interfaces, then every single one of them is going to be listing in on port 80. So we're going to see that right there. And then also we see port 53 down here and also port 53 down here. And let's see if we see it up here. We don't see it up here. And we also see port 80 down here. So port 53 is a port associated by default with DNS. So DNS is going to be listing in on the IP address. This is the actual IP address assigned to this system. And 127.0.0.1, you're going to learn about that later in the course. That's the loopback address. That's just another address for this system. And down here, this is going to be port 80 for IP version 6 as well, listening on any IPv6 address that we assign to the system as well. So we see DNS, we see our web server, but we do not see DHCP. So why is that? Well, DHCP runs on port 67 and 68. The reason that you don't see it is because I actually didn't finish configuring it. I have to assign it a scope and I have to enable that scope, but I didn't do that because I have this connected to my network at home and I don't want to run into any conflict issues with DHCP that's running on my Soho router. What I want to do now is actually take a look at the web browser and show you a socket in action. So what I did is went ahead and typed in the IP address of the system using HTTP, which is a protocol that we're using for this web server. And let me go ahead and hit enter again just to show you that this is going to load. And this is the default web page for the web server. Now, what happens if I do a socket? Because I know that this is running on port 80. If I do a socket with port 80, you're going to notice that it reloads and it just gets rid of the socket because it already knows the web browser knows that we're running on port 80. But what happens if I try port 443, which is for HTTP secure, which means it's encrypted. If I try doing port 443, what happens, and I'll hit enter again on this, but you'll notice that it cannot connect because I don't have the web server configured for HTTP secure. I only have it configured for port 80 for HTTP. So that's going to go ahead and conclude this video. If you have any questions regarding protocols, ports, and sockets, please let me know. And how I did all this stuff in my Windows Server 2016, how I set up DHCP and DNS and IIS, you actually don't need to know that. But again, I wanted to do a live demonstration. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care.
Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.